With New Horizons being the second best-selling game on the Switch, Animal Crossing is one of Nintendo's biggest franchises. It's also one of their least action-heavy franchises. There's no epic story, no sort of end goal to strive toward, it's just you living your life. This makes it a bit harder to rank the characters' moralities than with most franchises, but it's not impossible. I'm Kifinosi from 1UP Binge, and this is Animal Crossing Good to Evil. Before getting started, we have to lay out a few ground rules. For starters, we won't be including any regular villagers. This is because they aren't individual characters. There are eight personality types, and every single villager within a personality type is completely interchangeable dialogue-wise. So this video will focus only on special characters. Second, since there are over 60 special characters, we're going to limit this to the most iconic, developed, and interesting ones. Finally, since Animal Crossing is such a happy, conflict-free world, we may be splitting hairs a bit more than usual to rank these characters. Just like always, we're starting this list with the good. In this case, the characters we're talking about are more than just nice to you. They're exceptionally generous or hardworking. Maybe both. Our gold medal of good goes to the fan favorite character, Isabel. Serving as your secretary in New Leaf, she does a lot of the organizational work for the mayor. She runs the town entirely whenever the player is away, and despite such a large workload, she's always able to get it done and maintain a positive attitude. Other villagers have even commented on just how easy she is to talk to. She treats the town like family, which drives her to constantly try to make it a better place to live in. This tireless dedication to improving the lives of everyone around her earns Isabel our gold medal of good. This might be a bit controversial, but we're going to give our silver medal of good to Tom Nook. One of the most common jokes among the fandom is portraying Tom Nook as a greedy, underhanded businessman and loan shark. While these jokes are often funny, they aren't accurate to the actual character. Sure, you could argue some of his business practices are questionable, but that's if you look at them on a surface level. Yes, he uses Timmy and Tommy as child labor. Still, he's doing this because he views himself as their mentor. He wants to teach them good business principles so they don't make the same mistakes he made when he was younger. Plus, it's implied that he took them in after finding them out on the streets. People also like to point to the loan he saddles you with, but that's probably the most generous thing about him. You show up in this town with no plan for getting a house, and he gives you one, along with a loan with no interest that he never comes to collect on. Really, the only reason you need to pay it back is so he'll renovate your house. Can you point to a single bank in real life that will give you a deal anywhere near that good? We doubt it. Our bronze medal of good goes to the eldest of the Abel sisters, Sable. She had a hard life growing up, raising her sister Mabel since her parents died at a young age. She does hold some animosity toward her other sister, Label, after leaving to make it big in the city, while Sable was still having trouble raising Mabel. Even then, she manages to forgive Label when she comes back, so it's clear she doesn't hold too much of a grudge. After everything she's been through, that's pretty admirable. Next, we might as well talk about Animal Crossing's version of Santa Claus, Jingle. Once a year on Christmas Eve, or Toy Day in this case, he shows up and delivers gifts to everyone in town. Sure, he only gives out one gift per person, and you have to wear a disguise if you want more. However, that's still pretty generous, all things considered. Especially since if he realizes that you tricked him into giving you an extra gift, he won't be mad, he'll just laugh it off. From one gift giver to another, we have Phineas. Sometimes on sunny days, he'll give away small gifts like pinwheels and balloons for no reason other than to make people happy. In New Leaf, his role shifts to essentially being the game's achievement system, giving the player badges for whenever they achieve certain milestones. His gifts don't have much value on their own, but his entire goal is to make people happy and reward them for reaching milestones, and that's still pretty nice. Blathers is a museum curator who's genuinely passionate about his job. While he was in the middle of his studies, he was asked to run a museum out in the country, a position all of his contemporaries refused, but which he gladly accepted. Despite homesickness and a temporary delay in getting his doctorate, he didn't regret his decision. He takes his work very seriously, identifying fossils, recognizing forged artwork, and talking your ear off about bugs for admittedly understandable reasons. He still accepts them and puts them on display for all to see. He also uses his position in the museum to help others succeed, such as having his sister run the observatory and letting Brewster use the basement to run his coffee shop. Up next are Tom Nook's kids, Timmy and Tommy. 
They help out around their father's shop when it's fully upgraded in the first three games, and run the entire general store themselves in New Leaf and New Horizons. They take after their father being hard workers and friendly to customers. They're capable of running a store really well despite being so young. Depending on the game, Peli either runs the post office or all of the city hall in the daytime. She's enthusiastic about her job and even goes out and posts messages on the town bulletin board about people's birthdays, town events, and other random thoughts she has. In general, she just works to brighten everyone's days. Next is the younger sister Sable spent her childhood raising, Mabel. Unlike Sable, Mabel is very outgoing, and as a result, she's the one who works on the sales end, while Sable works on sewing the clothes. Not only is this an important role that keeps their family business afloat, Mabel does it so Sable doesn't have to interact with customers, which she's clearly uncomfortable doing. Sure, Mabel will chastise her sister for being rude to customers who do talk to her. However, that's perfectly reasonable since being rude to customers is bad for business. K.K. Slider is quite an accomplished singer if the excitement surrounding him and the fact his records are sold in Nook's stores are anything to go by. Despite this, the fame hasn't gone to his head. He's very down to earth and humble, willing to do things like taking requests and even giving out songs for free. In general, he just seems like a really cool guy to be around. From one performer to another, we have Dr. Shrunk. Despite the doctor title, he's actually a comedian who teaches the player how to perform different emotions. He loves performing and making other people smile, to the point that even Tom Nook envies his ability to be loved by all. And that says a lot, since many people don't even like his jokes. Now for the gray area. These characters are still good people, but don't do anything special. They may be nice and friendly, but they're mostly just doing their jobs. So up next are Reese and Cyrus, the happy couple that runs retail in New Leaf. They run the local pawn shop and allow you to sell items to them. What separates them from Tom Nook's store is that they'll pay you for anything you bring them, including garbage. The likely reason for that is they want to keep the town clean, so they provide a financial incentive. They also let you buy items that others have sold and let you customize your furniture, which is a plus. Copper works at the police station and guards the town's gate, allowing you to travel to other people's towns. He can be stern and straightforward, but only because he cares about his job of keeping the town safe. Brewster runs his own coffee shop called The Roost in the museum's basement, and later as a separate location. He can come off as a bit standoffish, especially if the player refuses to drink their coffee right away. After a while, he starts to warm up to the player and allows them to store gyroids in his shop or even work for him part-time. Rover manages to be a series staple, despite barely appearing in each game. In the original, City Folk and New Leaf, he sits down with you on your way to your town and asks you a few questions about yourself, allowing you to set up things like your name and gender. This may not be an amazing service in-universe, but still it does show that Rover is a friendly guy, willing to strike up conversations with strangers on the train. He also sometimes shows up in the roost and has a similarly friendly and relaxed attitude. Moving on to a character with a similar role, we have Cap'n. In the first four Animal Crossing games, his role is to drive the player to various places, such as the city and Tortimer Island. Whenever he does this, he strikes up a conversation with the player. However, unlike Rover, who asks the player about what's going on with them, Cap'n mostly talks about himself, rambling on about his time at sea and his exploits with women while the player waits to get to their destination. He's also a family man, with his wife, daughter, and mother living on and operating Tortimer Island while he ferries people over to it. Harriet is a hairdresser who operates the local salon, Shampoodle. She gives the player a variety of options for changing their appearance, such as putting in color contacts to change eye color. She also gives them a mask to look like a me, and of course gives them a haircut. She chooses the hairstyle based on a series of questions. After a while, she's even willing to give them haircuts of the opposite gender, which is oddly progressive from a game from 2005. She's very encouraging and tells the player that they look great afterward, no matter what. This could be seen as a negative trait, as she won't warn them if their style looks really bad but we choose to look at it as her trying to help the player be confident in their appearance. Up next is Blather's sister, Celeste. She operates the observatory in her brother's museum, even allowing players to create their own constellations. There's not much more to say, she seemingly just wants to share the wonders of space with others. Pete serves as the town mail carrier. While he isn't typically around, you can find him early in the day. He'll tell you all about his crush on Phyllis, despite the fact that she doesn't feel the same way. Meanwhile, Pelly has a crush on Pete, but he doesn't notice nor return those feelings. Pete is at the center of a complex web of romance, but he's a pretty 
nice guy otherwise. Kix is a simple guy. In City Folk, he works as a shoe shiner, and in New Leaf, he runs a shoe store. Not much more to say. If you need something involving shoes, he's the guy to go to. Katrina is a fortune teller, and her services vary from game to game. They can range from telling you what will happen the next day, to cleansing your spirit to avoid tripping. It's tough to gauge just how helpful her services are, but they clearly do help in some ways, although dropping a heavy object on the subject's head is a questionable way of telling someone's fortune. Now for the other police officer slash guard, Booker. Unlike his partner, Booker isn't exactly good at his job. He performs some helpful functions like changing the town flag and letting you know if any special visitors came in. The problem is with the lost and found. He never bothers to question the player on whether those items are actually theirs or not. Sure, there isn't a lot he could actually do in that situation, as there's not really a way to know who lost what. Still, he should at least do something. Now for the bad and the evil. Okay, this category comes with a big asterisk, as there aren't many characters in Animal Crossing who could really be considered evil. So instead, we're focusing on characters who have made questionable decisions, are somewhat rude, or especially shady. They may not be pure evil, many of them have redeeming qualities, but they're the closest thing to evil that Animal Crossing has to offer. Label is the mysterious third able sister who debuted in City Folk, where she runs the high-end clothing store Gracie Grace. When she was younger, she had an argument with Sable and left her for the big city to become a fashion designer. In City Folk, she sends letters to Mabel in an attempt to bring the family back together. And it's clear these letters worked considering she sells accessories in the Able Sisters shop in New Leaf. So yeah, she did abandon her sisters at a highly volatile time when she was younger. However, she admits that she messed up and tries to make things better, succeeding in the end. It's a nice story of redemption. Starting off this category is the mayor of your town prior to New Leaf, Tortimer. Long story short, there's a reason the town was willing to elect the first person who showed up in New Leaf. Most of Tortimer's day-to-day -day responsibilities seem to be carried out by Pelly and Phyllis while he sleeps in the back of town hall. He also has a bit of an ego, constantly reminding people of his authority. It's stated he has a cult of personality, of which he's the only member. That being said, Tortimer has positive qualities, mainly his love of hosting events. When he's mayor, he hosts plenty of holiday events like New Year's and the Flower Festival. Meanwhile, in New Leaf after his retirement, he hosts a whole array of mini games on Tortimer Island. So yeah, he's a good event host, but not really a good mayor. Jack is the spirit of Halloween, and he fully embraces the mischief that comes with that title. He'll give you a piece of Halloween furniture if you give him a piece of candy. If you don't give him any candy, he'll play a trick on you. Some of these tricks include putting a moldy shirt on you or replacing one of your items with a jack-in-the-box. Sure, some of his tricks involve stealing, which isn't cool. Still, they're easily avoidable and are in the spirit of the holiday. Plus, it's hard to argue with special furniture. Now for Label's mentor, Gracie. She's a world-famous fashion designer and the owner of Gracie Grace. As one might expect, she's very arrogant and bossy. She's often brutally honest regarding what she thinks of other people's senses of style, but that being said, she isn't all bad. If you manage to impress her with your sense of style, she will reward you with a random clothing item or a discount at her extremely pricey store. Plus, she took Label under her wing and gave her the nickname LaBelle to help her build her brand. It's clear Gracie at least cares about helping others in her industry. Next is Pelly's older sister, Phyllis. She also works at the post office, although she's assigned to work the night shift. Her personality is the polar opposite of her sister's. While Pelly is friendly and chipper, Phyllis is irritable and rude, often muttering complaints under her breath as the player uses her services. However, while Phyllis is unpleasant, it's tough to blame her for being that way. Having to work the night shift in a post office isn't exactly a pleasant job. In New Leaf, she confesses that she was so snappy because she was overworked due to Tortimer doing barely anything at all. Really, there's nothing wrong with what Phyllis does. Still, she is considerably meaner to you than most other characters, which is how she gets this spot. Our bronze medal of evil goes to arguably the most infamous character in the series, Sonny Rezzetti. He works for the Reset Surveillance Center, which we assume only exists to penalize those who don't save their game properly. 
He has apparent anger issues, losing his temper whenever he berates the player for not saving the game. He'll even resort to tactics like forcing you to type out a sentence or pretending to delete all of your saved data. To Rossetti's credit, he seems to have a good relationship with his brother. He'll let you off easy in New Leaf if your game gets reset by accident. In addition, a lot of his hostility just seems to come from caring about his job. But that last fact raises an important question. Why does his job exist? What purpose is there for an organization centered around lecturing people who don't properly save their games? It seems completely pointless, meaning he's probably harassing you for no good reason. Our silver medal of evil goes to Lyle. While he's in charge of the Happy Home Academy in newer games, there have been plenty of indicators of a shady past. In Wild World, he operates a health insurance service, which sends you money in the mail whenever a misfortune happens to you. This insurance service is implied to be a scam, given how the weekly forgery insurance payments don't cover the actual cost of buying a forged painting. He's also got implied connections to Red, as, once again, one of the misfortunes he insures you for is buying a forged painting. He asks what day would be ideal for Red to show up in the wild world without mentioning him by name. Even when he's working at the Happy Room Academy, he'll give you a bonus for using one of Red's exclusive items. Also, one line in City Folk has Lyle mentioning digging up bones in a yard and not the backyard. This could mean a number of things, yet considering his already checkered past, Lyle is someone we can reasonably assume was a grave robber at one point. To likely no one's surprise, our gold medal of evil goes to Crazy Red. While Lyle is debatably shady, Red is very clearly a con artist. For starters, in Wild World and City Folk, he won't even let you into his store until you get a password or invitation from someone else. You are also required to pay a 3,000 bell fee up front. Once you get into his shop, it's a guessing game as to what it's actually smart to buy. Some furniture is exclusive to his shop, while other pieces can be found at Nook's shop for much lower prices. Then, of course, there are the paintings. Red is the only way to get paintings and statues to fill out your museum's art gallery. The only problem is that some of these paintings are forgeries. Once you've bought a forged painting, there's nothing you can do about it. Crazy Red and Tom Nook are essentially two sides of the same coin when you think about it. Nook represents on honest businesses that try to provide quality products or services to the customer while still making money. In contrast, Red represents shady businesses that are more than happy to screw over anyone for a quick buck. Alright, now that we've got the rankings done, let's quickly go through the medals. The Darwin Medal goes to Jingle, whose inability to see through a player's disguise causes him to accidentally give out more than one gift. The Sloth Medal goes to Tortimer, for constantly sleeping on the job unless an event is going on, often causing his employees to be overworked. The Pride Medal goes to Gracie, as her status as the world's most well-known fashion designer has given her quite a big ego, even if it is somewhat earned. The Lust Medal goes to Cappen as many of his stories involve his exploits with women, and he even hits on the player if they're a girl. The Envy Medal goes to Pelly, as she envies the affection her sister gets from Pete, or at least she would if she knew about it. The Wrath Medal goes to Mr. Rossetti, the only character in the series with anger issues so severe his doctor has to tell him to calm down. The Gluttony Medal goes to Jack, whose appetite for candy drives him to give out furniture and play tricks on people. Finally, the Greed Medal goes to Red for his willingness to scam you out of your hard-earned bells. But what do you think? Do you agree with our rankings? Is there anyone important you think we left out? Let us know in the comments section. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the moralities of characters in your favorite games. But most importantly, stay wicked.